<laughs> yes. <laughs> Progress. So, 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 changing so. life. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Hi guys, my name is Nick and welcome to another episode of 24 bit. And today on set I have Kanuka Anjala. Big son of Jen. Iman of Chenza. Yes, and today we're going to discuss about the recent massive Twitter pads. But before that, I want to thank Legibra for hosting us today. Well, go check them out at www.legibra.com. So guys, this thing started on Thursday. I mean, we saw this. Twitter decided that all the bots, all the inactive accounts are going to be brought down. They are bringing down inactive accounts, um, uh, they say blocked <laughs> accounts. What's the difference? I think it was, um, it's um, one, the inactive accounts, yeah. and two, the inactive accounts that have been compromised. So maybe, you, so my, my thinking is, I'm not so sure about this, but my thinking is that they are taking down inactive accounts that you no know, longer portray the activities of the user. You remember like uh, we used to have horoscope apps we were linked into our data profiles. Yeah. So those are horoscope apps will always be tweeting and other apps we linked. So you find someone no longer tweets or has not tweeted in three years but, uh, but those things still run. So mm-hmm. that's a bot because that's not that person. Mm-hmm. So such accounts. So inactive but mostly no longer under the control or influence the person who those accounts see that person is. So I think those are the ones that are going to be targeted. And of course there is the others we, which we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I mean, I mean for our, our viewers who actually don't know what bots are, I mean, how would we describe that to someone who doesn't know what a bot is? A bot is a robot. Uh, no, I mean in layman's. <laughs> someone okay, who... okay, simplistically, yeah. a bot is short form for robot, but ideally when you say a robot, what comes to mind is those movies where it has <laughs> Yeah, where you have humanoids walking around. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these people who have been made by us and who have extra human capabilities and all. But that's movie de- definition of or view of a robot. A robot in a tech context is something that does a task repeatedly. Mm-hmm and it's programmed to do that. So on a factory floor, that could be an arm that picks chunks of metal from one place to another. Mm-hmm. So it will do that for 24 hours without getting tired because it's programmed and that's the advantage it has over humans. Uh, uh, on the web, it can be a script that runs over and over doing something repeatedly. Mm-hmm. Like bots fetch the information we see when you Google. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Google uses the term web crawler, but they're basically bots because they go all that place. Because imagine if someone had to see it, and you can't find the information you want to know Google. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when you used previously telephone exchanges, you'd call and someone goes and mm-hmm. plug the cable links you. But now you have a bot so that that aspect is done in a more efficient manner and repeatedly. Mm-hmm. So bots are basically things that do tasks repeatedly yeah. mm-hmm. on the internet, elsewhere, um, programmed to do so. Yeah. So in a more efficient manner than we humans could do. Mm-hmm. So yep. So maybe I can get a bot to retweet me and <laughs> times. You know how tasking it will be to get yeah. someone to do the retweet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can write a script to go do it. So that's a bot. Or to go and follow people, or to go and like their tweets. Mm-hmm. Like they're all over Instagram. Yeah. 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 And, and from, from, from the numbers we saw actually since past the retweet so they're actually doing this. Looks like we had so many of them out here. So, 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 uh, I don't to know many we've lost so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amongst us. Yeah. I think most have been there for a very long time. I think from the the very first days of Twitter, we've been seeing them around. Mm-hmm. So maybe over the years they have evolved into what they are right now, but they've been around for quite a while yeah. from the very first days because there are people who need to do certain things but they don't have the time to actually sit and do those specific things. So mm-hmm. What you do is just get a bot that does what you want it to do, and you're good to go. But Twitter wasn't deactivating bots. They yeah, deactivating they, they account, inactive accounts. Yeah. So we still yeah. have bots on Twitter. Um, um, I, actually, I'd go slow on that because while it was inactive accounts, even some of those inactive accounts were bots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So because uh, ideally, like the conversation going on on Twitter is that bots 
are being exposed, bots are being expunged from the platform. Yeah. Bots are not ideally use, uh, useless. Mm-hmm. Bots exist because as humans yeah, we have our own yeah. deficiencies and we need something that makes yeah. us better. So bots come in to fill in that gap. Mm-hmm. Like it's much easier to set up some code snippet that will run every other time you write a blog mm-hmm. and tweet it out. Yeah. Then you have to come and remember to share here, mm-hmm. to go and share there. Yeah. So bots are actually useful. So the account you set up to do that will appear as a bot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as long as it's not engaged in illegal activity or something that is you know it as a social yeah. it's a social media platform. This the social aspect of it. Yeah. People don't come to talk to machines. Yeah. Yeah. So anything as long as something does not interfere with what Twitter is supposed to be, it's good. Mm-hmm. Because like CNN tweets so many times in a day. Mm-hmm. Those are automated scripts. So yeah. essentially bots. But it doesn't interfere with how we interact. On Twitter, if anything, we actually get to engage with what CNN does a lot. based on the news mm-hmm. uh, a lot. So those are not bad bots. But then there's the rest that are out there to, yeah. to do crazy things, like follow trains and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Twitter says one of the reasons it's doing this is actually to increase trust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think we're going to work? I think one of the reasons has to do with the sort of the American elections, mm-hmm. you know, when people are were complaining about bots being used by certain parties to actually push their agenda. Mm-hmm. So I think that they are trying to address that and even to bring trust back to the platform. But bringing trust, I don't think removing the bots will bring or yes, removing bring trust. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think that's the case. So maybe they have their own agenda. But I, I think, think the thing that they're mostly targeting is the bots that are uh, creating fake content yeah. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion maybe something somebody with a real account could push a fake hashtag yeah. and yeah. use bots to make it trend and all that yeah, yeah. 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 yeah i think it's the same thing mm-hmm. because now when you think along those lines actually they even know that like bots based on the software they hardware mm-hmm. bots mm-hmm. like there are cctv cameras around here mm-hmm. a lot of these cctv cameras come with default uh, ssids mm-hmm. uh, and the passwords Mm-hmm. So someone just can hack into them from anywhere. Yeah. And then since what it's used here is for surveillance, there's a chunk of its resources that can be used on the internet for yeah. some other things. So you hijack that mm-hmm. and use it to drive traffic to someone's site, mm-hmm. take it down, but to achieve any of your aims. So there are bots that do that. So you can find some Twitter user, mm-hmm. bot X follows me, follows Nick, follows Kaluka, follows you. And the work of that bot is just do whatever their master wants yeah. and whatever their program to do, maybe come and retweet all our tweets all the time. So in a social network, that's not so social. Would yeah. you want to be on Facebook and have fake friends? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. so they beat the purpose, so I yeah. think that's why they're being purged. And of course, part of the misuse now has gone into the elections yeah. that were there in the US. Yeah. And I don't know why they're focusing on the US, yeah. but yeah. even in Kenya. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, some of those being, <laughs> some of those things being used yes, here yes. against us to divide us against tribal lines, to spread hate, do all manner of things. Yeah. So these, that all, it's it's messed up. But I think that's what it's why why it's called the purge. It's part of a cleanup mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to restore sanity, to restore credibility. But of course, we all do different things. So everyone has a way of seeing it. Like you will see, social media managers and people who uh, work agencies who are very happy because finally they get to see who's real and who's, who's real and who's fake because their jobs involve yeah. engaging with influencers yeah. and yeah. being on social media and tracking brand conversations so they want to know how engaging you are really uh, in a genuine way mm-hmm. yeah and without you exaggerating your follow account and yeah. your engagement rate and all I saw that. an account to lose uh, from 800,000 to 50,000 yeah. Yeah. yeah so and, uh, and it's a Kenyan so account that I never heard of so. Yeah, because some of those numbers were crazy. Until yeah. recently, Twitter was not popular in Kenya. You yeah. know, we, we mm-hmm. live in our own bubbles mm-hmm. in Nairobi, yeah. and we think like Twitter a lot of Kenya is Twitter. Yeah, Twitter, Twitter has really been go outside popular. Nairobi. Yeah, and you go outside Nairobi, no one is tweeting. And yeah. if if you happen to run into Twitter account, you can usually check uh, where the engagement is coming from. Nairobi mm-hmm. is up there yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. because Twitter is for a, for a long time, much as it's accessible to everyone, it has a learning curve, mm-hmm. and unlike other services like Facebook. 
So most people actually, I think they're also part of those who are being purged because of being inactive. People sign up, they don't figure out what this thing is mm -hmm. and they stop using, yeah. Yeah. stop using it. So for a long time we've been tied up in our own bubble mm -hmm. thinking Twitter is really out there and such a big thing. It's not. So when you come and find someone has a million followers <laughs> and Zero engagement. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> where does that start? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. on Facebook you could justify some of those numbers. Yeah. On Twitter, not mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Twitter matches now today Twitter is a force to reckon with in the country, but that has taken time Came to build. build. Yeah. But some of these people had these crazy numbers a few yeah. years back yeah. and it's been unrealistic. Yeah. And then you come and find the engagement someone gets. It's, yeah, exactly. It, so you things don't add up. You yeah. have a huge following, but yeah. the engagement. So you're wondering why are people yeah. following you if they are not engaging with your content? But for me, I think the reason why people go for such huge numbers is because maybe they look good. yeah, they look good. Yeah. They look good as influencers. So if you go to a company and you want, they probably want to work with you. They'll probably check your numbers. So they say this guy has ten thousand followers. This other guy has. 500,000, so they'll probably go with the 500,000. So if I'm the one with the 10,000, I look at it and say, see, I'll just buy a few yeah. boats here and there <laughs> to get to where this guy is. And even though the boats don't engage with me, even though the fake accounts don't engage with me, I'd still get the numbers and I'd get the money. But, I mean, you only but how do you measure engagement? Is there like a public way on Twitter to measure engagement? No, en engagement, it's simple. Okay, yeah. of course, there are social media analytics tools yeah. that do that. You can pay, others have free tires you can subscribe to. But the most real engagement is people talking, talking to you. Exactly. Yeah. And engagement can come in two ways on Twitter. People are either favorating or these days liking a tweet, mm -hmm. which means liking or favorating could mean uh, uh, I li uh, uh, like means I've seen the content and I like it. Yeah. That's it. But also, like in my case, how I use that uh, button most times, I want to come and read it later yeah. because now it will stay pinned. Yeah. You know? yeah. So that's a form of engagement. Someone saw it and they took action. Mm -hmm. The action was it was a like. So, like, I really like this content. Or the other action was I favorited. I'll come and read it later. So, if it was a link, well done, well achieved. The other bit is another engagement is a retweet. Mm -hmm. So if I have 200 followers and Nick has 500 followers, when he retweets my content, it goes to his 400, uh, 500 yeah. followers. Mm -hmm. So in uh, on top of the 200 that I have, let's assume 50 have seen it, mm -hmm. and assuming 300 of Nick's have seen it, that's 350. Yeah. So then this engagement there, yeah. and whatever action it will result, there will be as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So that is very visible. Mm -hmm. If you're sharing your stuff online and no one is engaging, no one is liking or retweeting, people can see. Yeah. You really don't need to have sophisticated yeah. tools to do that. And that's why some of these people who are engaged in that practice were being exposed. Yeah. Because you'd see someone has a million followers, but his tweets just get the same engagement rate as yours. Yeah. Yeah. You have 200 followers, so yeah. what's not adding up? Yeah. Yeah. Or someone has to train a ridiculous hashtag for them to generate any significant amount of attention yeah, online. Yeah. Or someone is not even an authority in anything, so they are just everywhere and anywhere. Always and ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of those were, have been questionable. Yeah. But the problem is, much as there are tools and everything, those are third parties. Mm -hmm. So there is no level of authority. authority now it's yeah. Twitter doing it, yeah. it's the people who own the platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that's why everyone is saying now see, yeah. because it's Twitter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So you cannot blame anyone like, yeah. oh, you know, like, you can't blame anyone. Yeah. But do you think Twitter, uh, Twitter's algorithmic timeline affects engagement? Um, I only used it for a few hours. I spotted it last night, last night yeah. and I've been using it till the moment I came for this shoot. Uh, first impressions were I really didn't like it. But then, since those few hours I've spent on it, I actually do like it. Mm -hmm. Because it reminds me of something else. I'm not a heavy user of Instagram. I probably log into that app after three or four days. <laughs> uh, and I probably post there uh, either when I travel, which is rare, yeah. or uh, once every two months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 but uh, the thing is, I hardly ever miss anything of interest on Instagram. Yeah. Because the moment I log in after, my, after a week or mm -hmm. after four days, Everything that Instagram yes. things you should have seen. Yes, yes. Like, and yeah. most times they are right because they know me so well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I usually see everything of interest. The same has been the case on Twitter mm -hmm. these last few years. Mm -hmm. I've actually, if you see how I tweet things and how I engage has even increased more than previous days. Because mm -hmm. previous days, 
I'll just I usually make a point of engaging with posts on the timeline instead mm-hmm. of going to people's profiles. Mm-hmm. I follow like two thousand people. That's a lot. So yeah. So I usually just go with what I'm mm-hmm. seeing on the yeah. timeline. Yeah. But now I log in something from fifteen hours ago, from six hours ago, from two hours ago, from thirty five minutes ago. They're all there and they're all interesting. So that has got me to engage more. So right now I'm having conflicted thoughts about the all ag- I don't know what I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, since Facebook launched their news feed, you remember yeah. in the past there was just a timeline and you yeah. would find everything. How do you remember that? Because I was there. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember how you log into Facebook and you yeah. find somebody posted two minutes ago, yeah. three minutes, mm-hmm. four, one hour, yeah. going uh, uh, according to chronological events. Mm-hmm. And you used to really interact with Facebook a lot in the past. Right now with the new TL and everything, uh, the news feed, you don't really interact with uh, as much as you you would in the past. Do you think the new timeline on Twitter will affect how people interact with Twitter in the coming days? Uh, for, for me, I think maybe you don't interact with a lot because of the new timeline, but I think it's good because mm-hmm. you get to see what you want to see. Exactly. And you don't get to see what you want to see. You get to see what you interact Twitter with. wants no, you to see. No, you get to see what you interact a lot with. So Twitter will keep showing you what you most likely will interact with. So for me, I think that's good. And when you're comparing it to the, to the old Facebook, you know, you have everything as they appear on it, as people post them. So maybe some people will be like, you know, we are used to Twitter being in a certain way, and now you're changing it. But for me, I'm thinking, if I have if like change the year saying you're following 2,000 people mm-hmm. and maybe you can see everything yeah you can see everything and people are posting on different topics mm-hmm. and maybe if you like a certain topic maybe mm-hmm. let's say tech and you are not always on Twitter all the time mm-hmm. so maybe when I log into Twitter I do want to see maybe what and people are talking yeah. about in tech and maybe the other topics I can find them if I want to mm-hmm. But I've, yeah. I've been seeing this on Twitter for a long time. You log into Twitter yeah. and you find that what this person mean? has talked about a car. Yeah. The next tweet is exactly about a car. They're not yeah. related, but it's about a car. Yeah. Yeah. The coincidence. Yeah, the coincidence is very, very... It's it's something that I think Twitter has been testing out in, mm-hmm. in the last couple of months because you find somebody is talking about a topic from... Uganda on social media mm-hmm. and the next tweet is about Togo's social media yeah. and you don't understand how it could be arranged on that. Do you think it increases engagement or does it affect something? I feel like it it is good, yes, but it also creates it puts you in a bubble of yeah. you will only see this content. But isn't that what most of these social media sites try to do? You know, you be in your own yes, bubble. Yes, yes. And for example, you know, if you're looking at something like the US, the way it's, it's been happening, you have these people who are pro a certain party and people are against a certain party. So Twitter will want you if you are pro a certain You only some, see, what, you see your, what, what's positive what on it. Yeah. Does that really increase engagement? Because think yeah. of it this way YouTube shows you what it thinks you like and what it believes your friends like that you may also like. Yeah. And, what the, and it creates like. So much content that's why when you get into youtube you can find yourself diving into so many different topics mm-hmm. do you think twitter will manage to do such a thing where you'll get into different topics because anytime i open twitter i'll just get tech and tech but tech 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 I, I think they will because of late if you're logging to twitter you might see a tweet from someone you don't follow but some of your friends do follow maybe that's something that Twitter believes you end up liking, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure, but I've been seeing it a lot recently. So you, you log into Twitter, you see a tweet from someone you don't really follow, mm-hmm. but it's content that you probably really want to interact with. Because the idea is to be single, actually, yeah. you, you will engage the content you yeah. actually like. Yeah. But my, my only problem is Twitter was the last place where we yeah. get a view of the world. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. sharing this on Twitter yeah. the other day, and everyone responding was saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I use video on demand, uh, streaming video on demand services. Yeah. They tell a content according to my taste, interest, according yeah. to what I chose as interest when signing up, mm. and what I watched on the platform. History, yeah. Facebook has been doing the same for the longest time. YouTube does the same. Twitter has been giving me a world view that is unfiltered. Yeah. Um, there are people who say things I like, the others who say things I really <laughs> don't, don't like, like but I get Twitter. all of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but now Twitter is changes. being my moral police and telling me, <laughs> this hey, is what you are yeah. so it will create a sort of bubble. Yeah. I really don't think 
I want that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it will, it will work for me because as I've said, my engagement rate is higher for just a few years, mm-hmm. hours a few of busy. Hours, yeah. So from Twitter's end, if that's what it wanted, then yeah. it will achieve that definitely. But for my user, I, I'm, I'm losing a part of me. <laughs> because yeah. I really want to like that unfiltered thing. Like, yeah. Let me just come and see everything. Someone is rocking avocados, fine. Another one is selling umbrellas, fine. Another one is talking about tech things I like, yeah. fine. Another one is tweeting about football, yeah. fine. But uh, when I just come and find... And then it's Twitter has been in the moment. Like mm-hmm. the way you use yeah, Twitter yeah. is not the way I use, use Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. 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 Because, yeah. yeah, my Facebook is even more sentimental. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Twitter, I really don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, because the difference. And yeah. then there are some things I'll say on Twitter today and I'll never say again because of the time value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're irrelevant tomorrow. How will you so, so, yeah. But if I'm to come and see them in 15 hours, yeah. <laughs> someone sees them in 15 hours, yeah. something I want to engagement for right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it makes no because sense. I usually fire questions on Twitter, like uh, last Monday, uh, is it Monday, I think Sunday in the week, in the morning, I asked, what paid apps? Mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever paid for apps? And if so, yeah. how much was the highest you've ever paid? Mm-hmm. And I got real-time engagement. Mm-hmm. Like within an hour, I had so many responses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, then I that, got yeah. the kind of responses, yeah. the information mm-hmm. I need. I wasn't going to use it anyway. I just wanted to see is it really that Kenyans don't buy apps. But there were interesting <coughs> responses. Mm-hmm. Those who are saying mm-hmm. like, what apps, and then others who are saying <laughs> paid. Some are feeling surprised for buying apps. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I was able to get that in real time mm-hmm. and real quick. Mm-hmm. But what if? People were coming to see that 15 hours later. Hours later yeah. yeah, so that's a part of Twitter. I'm sad we are losing. Yeah. <laughs> and the, and the new because now yeah. we'll need to be tagging people. You, ca- you have 280 characters. Yeah, yeah. 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 The new navigation. Be. Exactly. I, on oh. the, I don't know. What I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but they say they are testing. I don't but know. I don't understand I Twitter. Something they say they were testing the navigation to make it, I don't know, easier for what what. I don't, so I don't think Twitter. it's a complete. I joined Twitter in 2010. When I was in form three, mm-hmm. Twitter had a different look. Facebook almost looks like the same Facebook I joined, but it has really changed a lot. Because, yeah. because a bloody yeah. mess. Yeah. Because <laughs> Facebook, it makes you look at the same thing. It look at this a different thing and look and think that it's the same. But Twitter just keeps changing. Today yeah. it is over here. Today it's over here. Yeah. Today it's over here. Why why can't they even put the search button just on top so that you don't have to go to another tab to search and all? What do you think about the new navigation? Me. I mean, it's at the bottom, so yeah, it's, it's sort of be, easier. Yeah. It's not easy. I, I, but, you but you get now, used to it. Because right now it's new, so you're sort of, I'm used to it being at the top. So you, if you put no, the I'm trying to think, yeah. uh, they, uh, Twitter is a big company, so they yeah. don't just introduce new, new features stuff yeah. without yeah. Yeah. introducing yeah. new features. It's probably backed up by research, because yeah. if you had to go back, the time you joined Twitter in 2010, and now it's eight years later, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Back then, a 3.8 inch smartphone was really big. Yeah, yeah, true, Today, true, true. 6 inch smartphones are the norm. Yeah. So, what are the odds you want to reach all the way to the top to access mm-hmm. your bar mm-hmm. instead of having it here on the bottom? Yeah. I'm not defending yeah, that, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that <laughs> bottom <laughs> navigation. I think it's a mess, yeah. but yeah. there is that thinking yeah, too. Because sense. if you are to, 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 to do some testing, I think people will find it more intuitive that to get them over down here. here. It's, you can reach it. Yeah. Yeah? than having to go on your very big phone all the way to the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the same, the same thing is complaining about the fingerprint sensor being here and some preferring you being here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get used to I it. just yeah. prefer fingerprint sensor being here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it will never be, <laughs> it will never be yeah. better. Yeah. It will never be better yeah. Yeah, that is yeah. Some people are putting it on the side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but back to the, the pads. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think these, these are pads need to affect how brands work with, you know, with, uh, you know, influencers work with you. I don't think it will affect anything yeah. because yeah. brands are blind. Yeah. Yeah, they don't care. Not even after They just go to... I mean, it's Twitter the, doing it, not just some random brands. It, 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 I don't it, really it, think I, most brands will take it seriously. They, the people who have lost followers still have many followers. Yeah. yeah. They'll and still find they'll ways still buy new to followers. buy new followers. <laughs> <laughs> and they go back to the same numbers mm-hmm. they had. So. Mm-hmm. And you can never know, the, because it's yeah. technology, there is always a new way of getting new stuff yeah. illegally. Or it's illegally, very yeah. cheap to actually buy followers. I don't know how many yeah, people very, very, very very cheap. Cheap. I, I, There's I'm a link we shared uh, a while back. There were yeah. some Kenyans who were doing that. Yeah. 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 But even, as, not, as, even, as it was even 250 shillings. Yeah. But are Actually, they the, the, we'll get the ones that are being yeah. deleted? Are they the ones being deleted, or are they like you, know, you never understand? Yeah. Recipe and mm. only 
Twitter so, knows what it is. So I don't <laughs> really believe the brands will take this part seriously and stop working with certain influencers. Yeah. yeah. No, it, Maybe the most obvious case is where somebody has lost 800,000 to 50,000. <laughs> That's like a really but big deal. The question but, you should be asking yeah. is, are brands already doing that? Because mm-hmm. smart brands or smart agencies, no or, smart, or brands that have been handled by smart agencies have been doing their homework. So this mm-hmm. is something they've known for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And they've been choosing to engage. Yeah. 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 So as far as that goes, nothing really changes. If anything, it actually affirms. Maybe mm-hmm. a client was asking, why don't you work with this guy with this so guy, many followers? Yeah, yeah. And the agency told them this. Now it actually and just justifies yes, yeah. and backs yeah. that up. Mm-hmm. But uh, in that way, I don't think it's just that um, more people will be... I think the change will be from the user side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, on Twitter there's this nonsense of Twitter A and Twitter Z mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all that. You know what brought it? was not even that people engage at a different level than others. Mm-hmm. It was that the first undoing was we created an impression of big weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The whole idea of big weeks was not based on clicks or anything. They had more followers. More followers too. And you, you are a small week. Mm-hmm. You have fewer followers. <laughs> I think that's why even the word small week came mm-hmm. because yeah. big week has been there. It's an English term. Mm-hmm. I don't know if small week sneaked in, but <laughs> <laughs> it was to address this other demographic. <laughs> Is there? We didn't have followers. So yeah, yeah, so yeah no that's just know. number of followers. So I think yeah. the biggest change will be on user perception, mm-hmm. because you will come to Twitter. You've just signed up. You have two egg followers, mm-hmm. and you find this guy. <laughs> and the eggs are no longer there. Yeah, <laughs> who you know, but has a million followers, and you're like, how? So oh, you yeah. sort of start worshiping this guy, yeah. and you probably, even though his opinions are trash, mm-hmm. you hold them to higher value because he has there. more yeah. followers. Yeah. So I think it's more user side mm-hmm. than from the other, because. If it's a brand that does it somewhat, then they've known for the longest time. Yeah. You, like, you sign up for Twitter today, since we've been seeing uh, someone on TV, mm-hmm. you follow them mm-hmm. because they are known to you. So they are a celebrity outside social media. Yeah. The real problem with the bots and the purge and everything is social media celebrities. Yeah. Not people who are celebrities. Yeah. 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 People will follow a certain media station mm-hmm. because they already they know the news. news. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they want to get the news and something. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, so uh, that way it will build its following. Mm-hmm. And then mysterious ones, who have, uh, mysterious social media managers have gone on to buy. Mm-hmm. Well, they really didn't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But then social media celebrities, for them to become even celebrities, <laughs> yeah. they have to buy. Yeah. They have bought. Yeah. So these ones are the ones that are really affected. Because yeah. if you are a politician, Politicians are literally worshipped in this country. Mm-hmm. You don't need to buy followers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some have a lot that uh, popular politicians never did. So even the followers they are losing are just bots who are programmed to follow them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So not really something that you can say is uh, something that pin down on them yeah. or their social media handlers. Yeah. But that's very different from people who are big names on social media mm-hmm. and not really big names outside it. Like the KFC big guy. Give me a call. How many followers did you did you lose? I I didn't lose any follower. I don't think I lost any follower. I lost I didn't lose any. I lost around three hundred maybe. Ah, okay. Social you bought. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we found one person. How many did you lose? I I as far as I know I didn't lose mm-hmm. anyone. Yeah. Uh, I'm checking my count here, it's still the same yeah, range that same. I've known. Yeah. But on the other hand, I, I, and I'll say this, I usually do check who's unfollowing me. Yeah. Yeah. I usually see a lot of bots. <laughs> you know these follow for follow bots, yeah. they usually follow you, waiting for Wait. you to follow, yeah, because yeah. they are programmed for yeah, such yeah. behavior. So yeah. you'll, I'll come in a week, I find I have 108 unfollowers. But they're basically all bots, they're people I don't know, people I have no interest in. Mm. And they just, when you check their following follower ratio, mm-hmm. it's it just tells you a certain trend. Yeah. So they're automated. So they, if I follow them, they have no value to the kind of conversations I want to have on my Twitter. Yeah. So, so I never follow them. Another bit is I usually never check who was following me. Mm-hmm. So unless I get that Twitter prompt it sends, I usually never check. So uh, if you're expecting a follow back, it's not coming. Yeah. So when you come and check these unfollows, you find a lot of them are bots. The yeah. yeah. So they've been there and I think they affect all of us. Mm-hmm. But people whose numbers will have a difference are those who actually went and bought uh, well, accounts that have been yeah. searched in yeah, yeah, and such yeah. types of behaviors. The rest of us have nothing to worry about our four followers. <laughs> yeah, They'll still remain for <laughs> And actually, this, this brings me to the, to the, you know, as we wind up, eh? yeah. like how brands work with online influencers. I mean, is it always about the numbers? 
there are smart agencies like Chenza Sage and there are foolish agencies <laughs> that work with anyone. Yeah, because you can imagine someone who is not really aware of how maybe something is like social media works yeah. and I approach them and, and I tell them I want to work with you. And I They'll probably them. tell me, mm-hmm. you know, the people you want to work with are people with a huge following. So I'll go and find people who have a huge following and mostly you find these are the people who have bought the followers. Mm-hmm. So I get those people to work with them. Mm-hmm. So the company probably wants to see people who have a huge following, they don't really care about it, they engage them sort of so much. Mm-hmm. So you, like celebrities like yeah. I, I, there's a tweet uh, the other day celebrities can sell anything yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a perception yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think and, and can it happens I mean it just shows will yeah. you ever buy a TV because a celebrity said I use this TV <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a celebration perception of yeah. TV yeah. yeah it's a yeah. perception thing mm-hmm. because and then we are humans mm-hmm. uh, we are wired to be the more the better mm-hmm. yeah so it's been going, and then a lot of people who make decisions are uh, neither anywhere near being our age or younger uh, or slightly older, they are yeah. way older. Yeah. They don't understand the whole concept of new media yeah. and they think more is always better. Yeah. 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 They think that um, having more followers is a sort of metric that affirms your authenticity yeah. mm-hmm. or the authenticity of the message you send, yeah. which is really not the case, yeah. as we, we all know. Yeah, so it's a perception thing, and maybe this badge um, will get a lot of people becoming a, because even some of these big names, like in Kenya, who've been affected by it, and who are otherwise supposed to be people of good standing in society, a lot of them it's not really their fault. It's yeah. the people who they handle their, account, their accounts. Yeah. yeah, or it's them who told those people to make those decisions yeah. because you come and ask someone, so you manage to make it a wide way of 300 followers. <laughs> And person X has 100,000 followers, yeah. I also want 100,000 yeah. followers. So if your job is on the line, what will you do over it? And you can get all these followers for 500 yeah. bucks. Just go and buy them. Yeah. And you save your job, yeah. and the boss is happy. Yeah. Everyone is happy. Both are happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know guys, we can actually like end this conversation right now. But actually, uh, you know, it's a conversation, it's only keep revisiting in uh, next episodes. So just, I mean, if you are a, a, a Twitter user in Kenya, tell us how many followers do you use? Did you lose actually? And, uh, you know, tell us... Where did you buy them? Yeah, where did you buy them if you bought them? <laughs> and how much do you buy them? <laughs> so that yeah, we also can't buy them. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can actually do the same. But thanks so much for watching. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Nick. I blog at TechTrendsK.ke. Imano Chenze. And Kenya.com. Kaluka Anjala, tekarena.co.ke Dixon, techish.com Yes, and our camera guy, David. David Mitonga. He has he bots. Hyphen labs.info <laughs> You have bots? Bitcoin. No. <laughs> he has Bitcoin bots. <laughs> yeah. He has crypto bots. <laughs> yeah, and also I want to thank Legibra for hosting us today. Uh, yes, just keep checking them online. Legibra, www.legibra.com And do they host bots? <laughs> <laughs> this discussion is done. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for watching and see you next time.